Just a little more than three years ago, I had a tubal ligation. The surgery was suggested to me by my doctor for the purpose of permanent birth control. Over the course of less than three years, he brought the subject up and suggested the surgery to me on at least three occasions. I based my decision to have this unnecessary elective surgery based on the statements and information he gave me in January of 95. He told me that insurance would pay for it, that everything, including my health, would remain the same. He told me that the only thing that would change and be different is that I wouldn't get pregnant anymore and that my life would be enhanced by this simple surgery. Um, he said that I should have this surgery if I was done creating my family and that I shouldn't be on the pill at my age. Hi. Okay. And he calls office when I was ready to schedule the surgery. In the fall of 95, just like thousands of other women that year, I underwent this elective surgery. And just like the millions of women before me, and this still continues today, I was never informed that tubal surgeries were and are known to cause anatomical, physical, and hormonal changes in women. These changes are caused, as I understand it now, caused by blood flow compromised to the ovaries and other reproductive organs. It is the nature of the surgery. Going back 30 years, many studies have been done about the changes that happened after, happened after a tubal. Some studies have been published and have made, been made available in abbreviated forms to the public on the internet. The majority of these studies prove that negative side effects do happen, including hormonal changes. Other studies proving the negative side effects have not been made public and in a sense have been hidden away. The symptoms of the physical and hormonal changes that are most noticed by post tubal women are by the changes in their periods and increased PMS. This condition has been referred to by post tubal women and by the medical community as post tubal syndrome or um, PTS. Even though scientific research has proved time and time again that physical and hormonal changes can and do happen, the gynecological community has early on refused and still refuses today to acknowledge these findings. They have taken the stance that post tubal syndrome or castration is not real. It is not possible and has not been proven. This is not true. This being the case regarding informed consent, the standard was and still is not to tell women that they may experience negative physical and hormonal changes as side effects to the tubal surgery. I feel that it's important to point out that tubal ligations are not life-saving. Tubal ligations are surgeries that are marketed and add income to a doctor's practice. They have a motive not to inform. If and when side effects are disclosed to women before the surgery, they are downplayed and not completely explained. For example, women are told that they might have a slight increase in their periods after the surgery but are not told why this happens or how severe this increase can be. The slightly heavy periods can become so extreme that women have described the periods as gushing and flooding. In some cases, the bleeding is so heavy that the women have developed anemic um, conditions. Passing clots, sometimes as large as golf balls, has been reported. On the other hand, women are told about the benefits that could happen from a tubal, such as lowering the risk of ovarian cancer. But again, they are not told why, which is because they'd be at a higher risk for needing to have a hysterectomy. And that, at that time, her ovaries would be also removed. No ovaries, no ovarian cancer. Today, in 1998, doctors and information booklets are still erroneously state that tubal ligation surgeries carry no long-term risks. Women are led to believe that if something very bad were to happen during the surgery, that the woman would know about it right away or within days after the surgery. They claim that tubal ligations are perfectly safe, have no side effects, and will not cause menopause to happen earlier or happen instantly. Medical research has linked these side effects to tubals, and those researchers have cried out for further studies to be done. Doctors have acted unethically, unethically, I'm sorry, with harmful intent 
by dismissing these medical studies, by ignoring the scientific research, and by intentionally withholding this very important information from prospective consumers of tubal surgeries. They then continue to withhold this information when women return with problems. This non-information and non-treatment is done in an effort not to expose themselves. Women presenting themselves to the OB community with hormonally related symptoms and problems after a tubal are routinely told that they are too young to be menopausal, that their condition is not hormonal, um, and post-tubal women are rarely tested and then properly treated for hormone, um, hormone imbalances. Without the proper testing and treatment, women are at the mercy of their doctors who are in reality committing assault and battery if it is found that these women do have an imbalance. Post-tubal women are intentionally not suggested a hormone test even though that should be the first thing done. In turn, post-tubal women, when they request that these standard tests be ordered, it is not uncommon for doctors to meet the suggestion with disallowance. Some doctors have been known to flat out refuse to order hormone testing even though the woman presents herself with obvious hormonal symptoms which merits testing. These tests are standardly done all the time for women who are not post-tubal and are repeated two or three times to be accurate. Post-tubal women are told feeble reasons why these tests should not be ordered. Some excuses that are given are that the tests are too expensive, they are not necessary, that they will not show or that they will never show anything that the hormone test will not help in diagnosing their condition, that their condition is related to stress, that they are too young to be menopausal, and the list goes on. On the other hand, post tubal women are suggested and many undergo radical procedures such as DNCs and hysterectomies as treatment for their extreme periods. Both of these solutions, a DNC and a hysterectomy, will stop the woman from having the extreme periods, which is a symptom, but will do nothing for the cause, which is hormonal. If blood tests are ordered for post-tubal women, the OBGYN community has self-governed that the test should be the TSH test and only this one test. This test will only check for the function of her thyroid, but not tell if she's experiencing an ovarian-related hormonal problem. I'm not saying that thyroid levels shouldn't be checked but it's not the only test available. By itself, it's the wrong test to give a post-tubal woman presenting with a hormonal imbalance to diagnose her condition. This test will not show a post-tubal woman or any woman of her ovaries have diminished or lost function. Ordering this one test is one way that doctors cover up the tubal issue or to pull the wall. Post-tubal women are commonly told that this test and only this test must be ordered before any other testing can be ordered. This is not true. Doctors can order whatever test he she thinks is necessary. When checking levels, many, level check, many different levels need to be looked at, not just one. When this test comes back, the doctor then misleads the woman that there's no further testing that would be necessary. If the thyroid test comes back normal, Doctors tell the women that there's no need to, for further testing because this one test came back normal. In rare cases, if the test comes back abnormal, she would then start thyroid medication and be told that her condition is entirely, that this is the cause of her condition entirely. Either way, the test comes back, the doctor has an excuse not to order further hormone testing. Doctors know that this tests will not show ovarian function, but that other tests do. Still, doctors don't suggest further testing, but do offer treatment to their condition by suggesting surgeries, such as hysterectomies, DNCs, or by prescribing the pill. Many post-tubal women have been prescribed the pill, and many post-tubal women have posed the question, if I had a tubal, then why am I on the pill? These women are told, these women are told that their conditions are not hormonal, but that the reason for these heavy periods are unknown, but that she needs the pill and only the pill to regulate her extreme bleeding. She is told that if she doesn't take the pill, her bleeding will likely to continue uncontro uncontrolled, and many women do experience these, and many women do become anemic 
because of these heavy periods. And that, of course, her only other options are DNC or the hy hysterectomy. Unlike hormone replacement therapy, hormone levels are usually not checked before prescribing birth control pills. Since hormone levels are not checked, the treatment and the action of prescribing the birth control pills not giving women other hormone options, along with telling the women that her problems are not hormonal is an error, error and a cover-up. Still, these women are under major duress with their health, and because these extreme periods are so bad, many women do accept this hormonal action, course of action, not realizing that the pill is being prescribed to them not only in an attempt to regulate their periods, but also a form of estrogen replacement therapy. In truth, it's probably not a bad idea for a young woman, if she has an estrogen deficiency, to be taking estrogen. And hormone replacement therapy is known to control bleeding. She, mean, she may need estrogen or progesterone or both. Without hormone testing, the doctor's only guessing at what her condition is and that she may need hormones. The pill, however, is not the only and probably the least safest course of treatment for a young woman who will need long-term or lifetime hormonal therapy. Doctors withhold this information and post-tubal women are not given other hormone replacement therapy choices other than the pill. Reason, the reason doctors don't suggest other forms of hormone replacement therapy is because then it sounds hormonal. Just saying the words hormone replacement therapy would make any young woman think of menopause and hormonal conditions. The words hormone replacement therapy Sounds scary. Hi. <laughs> Sounds scary, and it would be, in a way, admitting to the women that she has a hormonal imbalance which might merit testing. Also, many post-tubal women have been on the pill sometime in their life before their tubal, so it's not something new to them, and it doesn't sound as serious as hormone replacement therapy sounds. The fact is, this whole issue is very serious. Another way the pill covers for the doctor is the pill is one type of hormone treatment that will cause a woman, if she still has her uterus, to continue to have monthly periods, and she will continue to have monthly periods for as long as she's on the pill, even if she goes into complete ovarian failure or menopause. If she continues to have periods, she will never know if she is menopausal or has been castrated until sometime after she stops the pill. Other safer types of hormone replacement therapy will not cause a woman to have a monthly period. But again, if she were prescribed safer hormone replacement therapy, she might question her, her hormonal status. post women are commonly put on the pill all the time without being offered pre-testing and told that they'll be on the pill until they're 40 or so. And um, at that time, then they're, they get off the pill and then they might find out that they have a problem. So um, then the time is so long between that period, then they don't really correlate what had just happened to them. The birth control pill was designed for women with hormonal levels, with normal hormone levels for the purpose of birth control, not for perimenopausal or postmenopausal women for the purpose of hormone replacement therapy. The pill should not be given to a woman long-term as hormone replacement therapy and is considered very unsafe to do so. Birth control pills have a much higher amounts of estrogen than traditional hormone replacement therapy, and using the pill as hormone replacement therapy puts a woman at higher risk for stroke, cancer, and other problems. Being on the pill can cause um, the woman's condition to even worsen which would make her more susceptible to the suggestion of a DNC or a hysterectomy. Many women go on the pill and then quit because their condition come, becomes worse. So now, at the other end of the scale, if she's experiencing an estrogen deficiency, isn't offered hormone testing, is never offered the pill or um, other hormone replacement therapy, or is prescribed the pill but she refuses to take it or stops taking it, these women can be at risk for bone loss. Um, the amount of